Today I'm talking about getting fancy with PowerPoint. How to use some of the features that a lot of you know are there, but don't know how to use or perhaps haven't seen. The purpose of this presentation is to show you what is available and how I use it. It's not a masterclass, a how-to. My expectation is that you will try half of your computer types You'll want to do it yourselves once you know what's available. And everybody else, please ask me. I'll be more than happy to help. I'm naming a number of packages. Microsoft Office 2010, Dragon, Corel, Movavi, Audacity. Wasn't that a boring slide? Let's try it again. In slow motion. Microsoft, PowerPoint. That's what this presentation is mostly about. Microsoft Excel, well integrated with PowerPoint and interesting in many ways in its own right. Word, I'm going to talk about how that's integrated. I'm using Office 2010. It's as good as any. I have worked with Office 2003, 2007, 2010, and 2013. The main difference seems to me to be the menu structures. The functions are all pretty much there in all of them. In Corel, I use Photo Paint, that's the bitmap package, and Corel Draw, the vector graphics package, which I'll describe in another presentation. Alternatives would be Microsoft Paint, which comes free, and Adobe Creative Suite, which costs more than Corel and is a bit more powerful. Other packages cost a little bit of money. Movavi, video editor and screen capture. Audacity audio package. Oops, that one is free. I recommend it. Download it for free. And lastly, Dragon Naturally Speaking, which I use to dictate this and just about everything I write. Dictating is faster than writing. Okay, now the PowerPoint topics I'm covering today are text, which includes word art. How do you get your message out there in text? Then graphics, shapes and transparencies, two topics dealing with graphics. How you format the whole presentation? There's a lot of stuff to know there about background, slide formatting, the slide master. I'll touch on the ones that I think you most need to know. There's a great deal of material there. And lastly, movies. I'm making a movie of this. You may be seeing it on PowerPoint, excuse me, on YouTube. Adding motion is not hard. You create some text. The objective is ideal of three lines. You don't want to overwhelm your audience. Let me stop and give a word of praise to my club, the Toastmasters Art Talkers Club. Most of you do a great job with PowerPoint in that you use only about three points per slide and you have the best possible taste in selecting pictures from the internet. I wish I had as good a vision, as good an ability to find useful pho photographs, useful pictures as you do. Okay, go back to my slide presentation. So, to add animation, I suggest that you select the Animations tool. It's in the middle of the menu. And then have your text fly in and out. That's easy to do. That's what Microsoft expects you to do. Have them appear and disappear and have them jump around sometimes, tastefully, discreetly. Now here's a presentation I did for kids of the kid's song. The wheels on the bus go round, 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 round. Well, for kids, having all of this graphic razzmatazz makes sense. For adults, it detracts from what you're saying. So keep it down, but know it's there. Transparencies are important. There are two types of transparencies. You can bring in pictures with a GIF background, this is as opposed to the JPG that your visual, that your video camera or your uh, digital camera will take. 
So this is what a JPG would do, give you a white background, doesn't look very good. Much better to leave the background out and just have the gorilla jump in with no background at all. When you're looking for transparencies online, look for the checkerboard background. That's your sign that those graphics are going to not have a background when they show up. The other type of transparency is those that are in PowerPoint. And this is what they mean. They mean semi-transparent. This oval that I have just had come up overlays both my text and the picture in a semi-transparent mode. So you can see the ape underneath. Let's go at that again. Here I'm talking about page setup. I'm having this photograph of a Toastmasters picture in 2008 come up by degrees by having various transparencies in front of the picture. Now they're all gone. You can see the picture itself. My point is in page setup that this is a 4x3 format, which is the default for PowerPoint. It is not, it is the default also for VGA, which is old fashioned projectors. But 16 by 9 is the new HDMI format. That's what your new computer uses. And that's what new video projectors use, such as ours at Krapka Kama. This presentation is done at 16.9. Now I'm using only the leftmost 60% of it for my presentation, which is enough for the text that I want. And I'm using the rightmost 40% to put the spotlight on me as I talk. It solves the problem of where do I stand when I'm delivering a PowerPoint talk. And it also gives me a place to put my picture as I do this on YouTube. You need to set this up. You need to set up the aspect ratio via design page setup to move it away from the default of 4 to 3 and into 9 by 16, which is this. 9 by 16 picture is broader and you lose a little bit cropped top and bottom. Usually don't miss it. Moving on to the subject of setting up your overall presentation, you want to go to the menu and say View Slide Master, and you may want to change it. You probably will. I've changed it here to change the font from the default of Arial, which is in this master slide that comes up, to Times New Roman. I can change the color of the font. I can change the size of the font, both in the header and in the subheads. I can change the size and position of the text box, which I've done here. As I said, I've reserved the rightmost 40% for myself and confined the slides to 60%. I can change the text alignment. The header is usually Align center. I sometimes want to align it left. And you can position the header, footer, and page number. Now, the point to make about that, you can put the slide number, you can put in a footer, you can put in a date. Uh, you tell it where the, to position them via the slide master. What the content is, you do by the insert function in the main menu. Know this. Two places to go. First of all, slide master to position it, and then the insert function, where does it, what goes, the, goes in there, whether you number the slides or not. I'd like to talk about slide backgrounds. This is a picture of a house we built in Nicaragua, and I'm putting some text in front of it, and that text is hard to read, just as it says. What do you do about it? One solution is to put your picture in the background and use a transparency to make it lighter so that text stands out against it as it's full side of the screen. You go to design background styles and format the background. 
in this presentation. Otherwise, by the way, I have a Ukrainian flag technique uh, motif that I have put in via this menu. You can use word art. Word art allows you to mess around a lot with the format of the words. You can do some pretty dramatic stuff. Here I'm using just a plain word art to have text with outlines so it stands out against both light and dark backgrounds. I use Excel a lot for graphics. This is a spiral that I have produced in Excel. There are two ways to get it into PowerPoint. One is to use a screenshot and just import the graphics from the screenshot. But if you do a copy out of Excel and a paste special, that's the key, paste special into uh, PowerPoint, you can retain the sense of all the parts of the um, of the graphic. You can also paste special into Corel Draw and change the graphics. Here I have taken just the spiral curve itself. I used a drawing function to put a round curve on the end and I put a transparent background so I could import it here into Corel Draw into PowerPoint. I use Excel for other graphics. This is a bell curve in the intelligence distribution, famously. Excel exports to PowerPoint the recognition of what the titles are, what the axes are, the numbers on the axes, and what the parts of the graph are. So you see I was able to change the background to a light brown and to change the graph itself to a graduated blue to white gradation to make the curve stand out. I can also use that curve alone in Microsoft, excuse me, in Corel Draw. I say Toastmasters makes people smarter and this would imply that it makes you 15 IQ points smarter. Believe me, if that were true, everybody would be joining Toastmasters. Placing things on the screen is important, particularly as you start to do animations. Every object on the screen has a size and position, which you can see by right-clicking on the object. The text box if it's text, or the graphic if it's graphics. There's also an order, what's on top of what, what's in front of what, which is important when you do things such as the picture I just showed you of the semi-transparencies sliding away in front of the picture of the Toastmasters picture. You need to keep them visible in order to arrange the animations. So this is what I suggest. Keep the objects spread out as you work with them. Write down where they go, then move them where they're convenient to work with, get the animation sequence right, and use the size and position to put them back where they belong. Here's a complex slide that I use that in, talking about human evolution. Objects come in, some on top of each other, in sequence, and now we get to some pretty fancy stuff. That, that was done, by the way, by having a picture and then sliding a white box down to get it out of the way. And then I have other graphics come in on top of it, telling the story that human brains grew pretty quickly over the last uh, seven million years. My point was that you have three things. You have the size, the location, and the order. What's on top of what? Keep track of all of them and spread them out as you get it working and then put them all in place when you're done. You can record a PowerPoint presentation. I'm recording this one. I say re slideshow record. I use that to practice timing, to share the PowerPoint. If I want to say go to a convention and play the same presentation over and over again or to make a movie as I'm doing now to post on YouTube. 
You can also put video into your slideshow. This one is a video of our member Michael Bedwell showing his EULA boat. We'll see his uh, zoom in on his special oar that he has invented. I have shut out the, I have muted the video, excuse me, the audio on this video in order to talk over it. Audio is a problem when you have videos in a PowerPoint. You usually need to bring your own speakers in order to get enough volume and you have a question of coordinating your speaking with the audio that's coming from the movie. You can turn your presentation into a video. Do that by recording the PowerPoint as I just described and then look in, hidden in the menu structure, it was hard for me to find, File, Save and Send, Create a Video to create a video of a presentation. This one is taking about half an hour to record. So you first record the slideshow and then you say create the movie. And then I use video editing software to clean up the video that's created by PowerPoint. But you can use it directly. Well, that's pretty much my presentation. I'm going to do another presentation about related software. That would be, as I mentioned, Corel Draw, the Audacity Audio Package, and the Movavi Video Making Package, and the uh, Corel, excuse me, the uh, Dragon Naturally Speaking Speech Capture Package. So that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.